I'll hand you over to Harvard Professor Avi Loeb. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. In this lecture, I will focus on content that was described in my recent book, Extraterrestrial, that you see in the middle of this slide. And if I had to summarize this book, I would say, when you're not ready to find exceptional things, you will never discover them. On the right-hand side of this slide, you see a textbook that I wrote also this year called Life in the Cosmos with my former postdoc Manas V. Lingam. And on the left side of this uh, slide, you see a photograph of a photograph taken by the German photographer Herlinde Quilbel and presented in the, at the Berlin Academy of Science and Humanities. The photographer asked me to write on the palm of my hand the most important question that I consider to be uh, significant in science, and um, I wrote, are we alone? And uh, over the history of humans, uh, you can find portraits like this one of an emperor that was very proud of himself after conquering a piece of land. But now we know more about the universe. We know that about half of the sun-like stars host an Earth-sized planet roughly at the same separation as the Earth is from the sun. So altogether, there are more habitable Earth-like planets in the observable volume of the universe than there are grains of sand on all beaches on Earth. And that teaches us modesty. It provides a perspective of cosmic modesty, because this emperor is nothing more than an ant hugging a single grain of sand, the earth, on the landscape of a huge beach. It's not very impressive, but I can understand where it's coming from, because when I watched my daughters when they were infant and they stayed at home, they thought very highly of themselves. They thought that they are the smartest in the world because they compared themselves only to the family members. But when I took them to the kindergarten, they got a different perspective. And so for our civilization to mature, we need to meet others. Now, most of the stars formed billions of years before the sun. We know that because we observe the star formation history of the universe that you can see on the top right. And so what that means is that if half of the sun-like stars have a planet with similar surface conditions to those of Earth, that there could have been civilizations as advanced as we are billions of years ago. And they predated us. And just imagine one of them developing artificial intelligence the way we do. Uh, that, uh, such uh, intelligence is driving cars right now and in the future will make medical decisions. And if they decided to send uh, AI systems into space, those can behave as autonomous systems that do not need any guidance after an initial training uh, period, sort of like our kids that we educate at a young age and then send to the world. And so if another civilization sent such AI systems equipped with 3D printing capability, they could have replicated themselves once they landed on the surface of other planets. And within a billion years, they could have populated the entire Milky Way galaxy, all the habitable planets within it. Do we live in such a reality? We don't know. But the only way to find out is by looking up around us, rather than arguing about this issue philosophically. We should not repeat the mistake that philosophers made during the days of Galileo Galilei. Four centuries ago, they knew that the sun moves around the earth and they refused to look through his telescope. And they put him in house arrest. And of course, all that did was to maintain their ignorance. Of course, we can choose to be ignorant and not look through our windows and argue that we have no neighbors. But that will not get rid of our neighbors. And that was the underlying rationale behind 
the Galileo project that I announced uh, at the end of July this year. And the idea behind it is to dare to look through new telescopes for possible equipment sent by more advanced civilizations far away a long time ago. Because extraordinary conservatism leads to extraordinary ignorance. The Galileo project is funded currently at a level of $2 million that I received from private donors that I didn't know uh, a few months ago. Uh, and the idea is to obtain a high-resolution image of objects that look weird in the vicinity of Earth. And there are two types of those objects. One are the unidentified aerial phenomena in the atmosphere of Earth that were included in the report delivered to the U.S. Congress by the intelligence agencies, arguing that at least in 143 cases, they cannot figure out the nature of the objects that were observed. And so the idea of the Galileo project is to use telescope systems and get a high-resolution image of these unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP. For example, a meter-sized telescope can obtain a megapixel image of a human-sized object at a distance of a mile. And we can potentially tell the difference between a label saying made in country X here on Earth and a label saying made on exoplanet Y far away. And of course, we will use multiple probes, uh, visible light, infrared light, radio waves, and uh, sound waves as well. The second component is to look for objects that enter the solar system from outside and look unlike any comet or asteroid that we have seen before. An example is Oumuamua, the first interstellar object that was discovered in 2017 and looked very weird. I'll, I'll discuss it in a few minutes. The goal of the Galileo project in this case would be, again, to take a close-up photograph of such an object that we will discover in the future and check whether it has buttons, screws, bolts, whether it doesn't look like a rock. And although we are funded already at $2 million, the goal is to uh, collect the, of the order of $20 million because that would allow us to have a comprehensive study of the sky based on the number of telescope systems that we need. And so there is a link uh, also for crowdfunding of this uh, project that is given at the bottom of this slide. As I mentioned recently, the Pentagon delivered a report on UAP to Congress. And the government is the most conservative organization. If it says that it cannot identify the nature of objects in the sky, and meaning that it cannot fulfill its obligation in terms of national security, then that's a serious matter. And scientists should come to help the government and figure out the nature of these objects. And of course, one should adopt the scientific method use instruments that are under full control, not a camera in a jittery cockpit of, of a fighter jet, but rather telescope systems that we design and optimize, including software that allows us to identify and track objects of interest. And the data that the Galileo project will collect will be open, and the analysis of it will be transparent, the way science is done. And the idea is to bring this subject to the mainstream of scientific inquiry and use what we know about physics to try and understand what we are seeing in the sky. In 2017, the first object from outside the solar system 
was discovered near Earth by a telescope in Hawaii called Panstars. It was given the name Oumuamua, which means a scout in the Hawaiian language. You can see it circled in blue in the middle of this image on the background of stars that are moving relative to it. It came from a very special frame of reference, the so-called local standard of rest, where you get to that frame if you average over the motions of all the stars in the vicinity of the sun. It's sort of like the local galactic parking lot. And one way to think of its initial state is similar to a buoy that is sitting at rest on the surface of the ocean and the solar system bumped into it like a giant ship. That's very unusual. Only one in 500 stars is so much at rest as Oumuamua was in that local standard of rest. And here is the kick that it received by the force of gravity from the sun. And as it was tumbling every eight hours, the amount of sunlight reflected from it changed by a factor of 10. And that meant a very extreme shape. Based on the analysis of the reflection of sunlight, it looked like at the 90% confidence, we can say that the shape of the object was disc-like, pancake-like, flat. You can see it on the left here. Uh, the dark regions imply probability close to unity for the parameters of the orientation of this uh, disk. And if you assume that it's a cigar that's shown on the right-hand side, you get something of the order of 15% likelihood, only very fine-tuned set of parameters in terms of the orientation of this object allow to get the light curve that was observed. So it's most likely, it was most likely this light. And then the most unusual fact is when the Spitzer Space Telescope looked at it, it didn't see any evidence for dust or carbon-based molecules around it. It was definitely not a comet. But at the same time, it exhibited an excess push away from the sun, a force that declined inversely with distance squared, and it couldn't be due to the rocket effect because there was no gas evaporating from this object, nothing seen by the Spitzer Space Telescope. And so, in order to explain this, this push, uh, you would have needed the comet to lose about a tenth of its mass. Uh, and since there was nothing observed, I suggested perhaps it's being pushed by reflecting light, sunlight. And for that, the object had to be very thin. Nature doesn't make very thin, solid objects. And so, I suggested maybe the object is artificial in origin. That's the fundamental question. Was Oumuamua artificial or natural in origin? And in September 2020, just a year ago, there was another object discovered by the same telescope in Hawaii, and it was given the name 2020 SO, uh, and it also exhibited an excess push away from the sun without a cometary tail, and the astronomers that discovered it realized it actually came from the Earth. It was a rocket booster that was launched in 1966 to the moon, and so it had thin walls, and that's why it had a lot of area for its mass, so it could be pushed by reflecting sunlight. We know that we produce this object, definitely artificial. The question is, who produced Oumuamua? And if I had to summarize the anomalies of Oumuamua, it had, uh, first of all, it was discovered when we didn't expect any rock to be found. I wrote a paper a decade earlier forecasting that there would be no rocks found by the telescope in Hawaii pan stars from other systems uh, based on what we know about the solar system. So its mere discovery was a surprise. It originated from the local standard of rest. Only one in 500 stars come from that frame, and so it couldn't have originated from any of the nearby stars. It, its uh, brightness from reflected sunlight varied by a factor of 10 as it was tumbling every eight hours, and that meant an extreme shape, most likely pancake-like. And 
uh, it deviated from a Keplerian orbit. There was an excess push away from the sun, but no gas coming out of it. And so a push by sunlight was the suggestion that I made. There were scientists trying to explain these anomalies of Oumuamua using a natural origin that they could have envisioned. But in all cases, the suggestion is that we observe something that we have never seen before. And my point is, if it's something that we've never seen before, why not contemplate also an artificial origin? So what were the suggestions? One was a cloud of dust particles that is a hundred times less dense than air. The problem with that is, as it gets close to the sun, it will be heated by hundreds of degrees and will not maintain its integrity. Another suggestion was, maybe it's a chunk of frozen hydrogen. An iceberg the size of a football field. The problem with that, and of course the suggestion is that it, when it evaporates, you won't be able to see the hydrogen because it's transparent. But the problem is that hydrogen evaporates very easily. We showed it in a paper and demonstrated that it would not survive the journey through interstellar space. And then there was a suggestion, maybe it's a nitrogen iceberg. Again, something we've never seen before uh, that was chipped off uh, the surface of a planet like Pluto. The problem with that is the mass budget. There is just not enough nitrogen in the Milky Way galaxy to produce enough chips such that one of them would be Oumuamua. And so the possibility that I contemplate is that uh, perhaps Oumuamua was an artificial object just like walking on the beach, most of the time you see rocks that are naturally produced, but every now and then you see a plastic bottle. And that was Oumuamua. And of course, if you imagine a caveman finding a cell phone, the caveman would argue that the cell phone is a shiny rock because the caveman is used to playing with rocks. So just like my colleagues, he would argue, it's a rock of a different type that we have never seen before. But that's just the beginning of a learning experience because the caveman can press a button and record his voice and then press another button and record his image. And then it will become clear that this is not a rock, it's something else. And so my hope is that by collecting more evidence on weird objects near Earth, we will see that there are not rocks and perhaps even press the buttons and import an important technology to Earth that could be worth a lot of money because it represents our future. Thank you.